All right, YouTube, today we're going to be going over a little bit of a Karachi VOD between Toronto and Atlanta in the winner's finals of the last major. Uh, this was game four, Karachi Hardpoint. And what I really want to bring up is a specific route that both teams did uh, at the end of the P5 going into the P1. It's a really, really important route because it's a big blind spot for any teams that are holding the hill. Uh, so when I was going through this on stream, uh, both teams do it. And for both teams, it ends up being a crucial part of how they end up breaking the hill. So I kind of break down that route in both situations and then I end up talking about the final few hills of this game Specifically how scrap was able to make some really important plays for Toronto uh, So that they can seal that game four and end up pushing it towards the game five uh, where they end up winning it on Rio So thank you guys for watching hope you guys enjoyed this video And I hope you guys can use some of this info uh, to help you guys out in uh, some of your gameplay So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later They get to kill top coop. This is this is a great play by Sim. He takes the route to go through bottom fountain. And since Scrap dies here, number four can't focus this anymore. Number two and number four are both worried about their top third because they need to cover this guy on hill. And he activates through fountain gets this kill. They get the kill low left. Now they can just converge on time. Last guy alive. Great break out of uh, out of phase. This is just a route off old too. But because of the way that they get this kill on on this top third guy or top coupai, number four can't pay attention to this anymore. So it's like the great a great activation. It all starts with the distraction of getting the kill on, on top coop. One wave here for Toronto. You need you need one wave. Huge huge gunfight right here. This is massive. One one verse seven. This is off the spawn kill. Scrap wins it. Massive kill. Huge. That's all set up because of the scrap kill. I mean, he, they, they end up trading the rest of these guys, but because, like, if he loses his gunfight here, if so, if if number seven kills him, simp, if seven kills him, then seven just kills him, and he has a free route towards front. They have to worry about their front, and only two guys can worry about the back. And there's three guys, so it's it's definitely breakable at that sense. But scrap winning this gunfight, it, it actually like wins them the map pretty much. Because it, it's it's on both of them to know. Like, Simp knows that he spawned out back alley and is playing for the kill. And Scrap knows that he's going to have one guy to play for, you know, this spawn kill. So they both know that they're going to be coming there. And Scrap winning that is is, is so massive. As a, otherwise, like, FaZe would have basically won it off of that hill. It would have been... A, it would have had to have been a really big comeback for Toronto. They make it mixy, so there's still like 16 seconds left, but... Like, imagine if they were at 2.30 now instead. It's, I don't know, it's like 2.30 to 1, what was it, 1.75 maybe? It's very different. Wow, you see the same route. Scrap takes the exact same route that, uh, what was it, that Simp did? Off of old, you you just pinch through short, pinch up through through fountain. It's just it's so hard to pick up. And he's got the kill on on for free. Draza obviously is picking up like the right side of the map here, and that's what you know Simp thinks he has the whole entire right side. But Scrap was uh taking this route. You're gonna see a lot of teams take this route off old now. And you have seen it. Like it's not like new or anything. But you do see a lot of teams use it to, to break on into that P1. Just another thing that the holding team has to watch. Is he mainly watching the minimap the whole time? Is that how they read VOD? Yeah. Minimap is fucking 99% of everything. 
towards bottom side shops. And you've got a player in Kleenex coming from the backside on the pitch. One more contested. It's a BZ. Should be overwhelmed. And you saw how important that, that route is. Because that route breaks the hill for, for Toronto. You saw how important it was for, for FaZe when they broke it. But you also see how important it is for, for Toronto when they broke it. It's a, it's a very, very important route. And I told you, like, I was telling you guys before how easy it can be to hold that P1 into that second rotation because what you have to watch. But when you take a route like that and find a timing off of old, it's like, it's so detrimental for, for the hold because you're expecting to, to basically full hold the hill. And if you don't pick up one specific route, it can completely screw up your entire game. Scrap locking down this left side. Simp actually took a route, or sorry, Abizi actually took a route. But he can't get the kill on time. He took a route through useless. And he can't get this kill on time. So he starts contesting. And Toronto just gets the rest of these kills and then they can focus on Abizi. That's huge. Hey, Via Inks, thank you for the, the sub. Four months. JP, was good? Funny, I just left Scrap's video of him watching this back. Dude, there were some really big plays he made. Like this, this play on the P1, dude. Honestly, the, the gunfight he had on that P5, and the gun or the the route he took on that P1 wins them the game pretty much. So they're gonna hold the rest of this time. 233 to 19 or 219. Wow, this. I'm not expecting this spawn here. It's just because as soon as this P2 pops, as soon as this P2 pops, because number seven and number eight are pushed, fully pushed out, number three spawns in the back here. Number six may read this. Oh, he tries to. He's not in time. It's, that's specifically because FaZe was pushed out. Now they're spawning useless. They, they can break from short and everything here. Simp is massive for the cutoff kills. They get the kill on, on Simp, and now they can converge on Hill. Insight's going to wait. Scrap with two huge kills. Abizi doesn't look for this kill towards the bus. I'm surprised he doesn't look for the kill. He's, he's afraid that they're going to hit through front time and hit through the backside. That he doesn't even turn to the left here and gets picked for free from Scrap. And last guy, last guy back L. Trade him out. And now Toronto just wins. That's a huge break. Holy fuck. That's just that's just phase being too pushed out, like so pushed out off of the the old time. It spawns number 3 out. It's it's obviously a whack spawn because number 2 spawns fine. But they even read it. Like a BZ even looks for a possibility of them spawning here. They just get the kills on on people pushed out. Without a trade either. So like if one of those gets traded, it's completely different for FaZe. That's what Scrap said. He saw BZ running and Ansley know they broke down. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure why he doesn't look to left here. I, I'm assuming he's thinking like, cause he knows that, he knows that Simp died towards front buzz. He's thinking that they probably are just going to hit the hill outright and try and kill this guy. But I mean, you got to at least look to left, I would assume, right? Yeah, I think, I think Toronto has good fun fundamentals and hard point for sure. And especially on this map. Like, they love this map. Honestly, Scrap was making the fucking plays here. Scrap in those last three hills basically wins them the game. Scrap, what was it? The P5, the P1, and obviously that final P2 getting the two-piece. But you see it. 32 and 22, 10 assists, 6,600 damage. I mean, to lock in the game five is, is so, so huge.